Welcome to the sixth video in my series of videos on how to build your own Gambrel style shed. In this video I will demonstrate how to lay out and cut the peak gussets. Because I need 11, I found the most efficient way to lay out and cut them is to use an old piece of cardboard for a template. Recall from my earlier video that the gussets need to be at least 24 inches wide to give you enough strength and nailing power. Note how the sides and bottom are straight cuts. This provides a much stronger gusset and it's a lot easier to cut. Note the penciled pattern with hash marks to indicate where the structural screws will go. Eventually, after I've cut out all of the peak gussets, I will drill holes through each hash mark and then use a black marker to indicate the pattern on each gusset. Now that you know the process for creating a gusset template, you can use the same process for Once the side Once you have gussets. the template, you can use it to lay out the pattern on your plywood. As you can see, I'm using 3 8 inch plywood. Since I'm located in the northwest, I don't have the heavy snow load. If you need more strength, consider using half inch or even 5 8 Also note that I've snapped chalk lines on the plywood to indicate the height and width of the gusset. Now it's a simple matter to lay my template in each box and draw around it. If you've followed my advice so far, you should end up with 20 gussets from one sheet of plywood. Just remember that the peak gussets are 12 inches high, while the side gussets are only 8. With your plywood marked, cut all the straight lines. Here, I'm cutting the side gussets so my lines are 8 inches apart. You can use a table saw for this step if you have one available. Then, cut the 24 inch lines and stack the plywood like you see here. The next step is drawing the angle cuts on each gusset. I've transferred my cardboard template to plywood because the plywood works better to draw around. Now it is a simple matter to line up the corners making sure that there is no overlap. Then draw the angle cuts making sure the lines are clearly visible and finally mark the waste pieces. With all of the gussets marked it is a quick and simple process to cut the angles for each gusset. Just be sure to keep the blade on the left side of the line as you cut. This ensures the gussets will fit perfectly with the rafter angles. Here is my master template for the side gusset. If you recall, earlier I said I would drill holes through my cardboard template into my plywood template. Now that I've drilled the holes for each screw position, I can simply place the template on top of a gusset, line it up on all four sides, and then, using my black marker, mark each hole. The reason I'm taking the time to do this is to save time later on when I actually fasten the gussets. Because I will be using wood glue, I want to work quickly to ensure a good tight bond. Marking the gussets ahead of time will allow me to place the screws in their proper location with ease. Now it should be a simple matter of setting the rafters into the template. Begin by setting the lower rafter in place, then place the upper rafter. If you followed my advice, your rafters should drop right into place. Next, take a side gusset and make sure the screw locations, which were marked earlier, face up. Then place a structural screw at each pre-marked location by tapping a few times to ensure they are deep enough into the wood to stay put. When placing the gusset, make sure it does not stick up above the rafter or that you place it too far away from the peak. Also, check to ensure the angles do not stick up above the rafter. It's okay to have a little space, you just do not want that gusset above the rafter line. With your gusset in position, draw the line at each side to mark the gusset width. That way you know exactly where to stop your glue. Next, put a few beads of wood glue on the rafter using a small paint roller to spread the glue evenly. Then, place the gusset, making sure that it does not stick up above the rafter line. Next, fasten one corner and then check to ensure that nothing is moved. Fasten down the other side, and with the gusset secured, finish fastening it by tightening all remaining screws. One thing to note, I don't have a lot of money to buy fancy screw guns, so I use this $5 tool from Lowe's. It works with an ordinary drill, and it makes the job easier and faster because it automatically sets the screw to the correct depth. 
Now it's just a matter of fastening all three gussets. When done this way, you can assemble a truss in less than 15 minutes. As you can see here, I've already completed eight of the 11 trusses that I'll need.